All right, here today to talk all things Marvel Universe is our very own Gonzalo, a.k.a. Magneto. So for those of you listening at home, he's wearing a Magneto helmet, leather jacket, and a very cool X-Men shirt. Gonzalo, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dan. Good to be back in the show in wearing this attire, Master of Magnetism. <laughs> so let's start off with the important stuff and to establish your credibility. Uh, you're a hardcore uh, comic book fan. How many comics do you own? I have about 10,000 comics, give or take, and I've been collecting since 1991. It's been a minute. It's 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 been a minute. Not only do you collect comics, but you also collect uh, figurines. I, I, I refuse uh, to call them toys. Okay, I might have to leave uh, their statues and <laughs> their non-toys. Yes, uh, so I'm a one-fourth scale collector and I have a couple one-third scale statues, mainly focusing on X-Men mm -hmm. and Batman. So the state of Marvel, 2008 really kicks off this uh, next wave, right? 2008, a down and out actor, Robert Downey Jr. gets casted. And obviously it was a home run, him playing Tony Starks. But in 2008, it was very controversial, correct? Uh, yeah, it was. What a time to be alive. Yeah, it was a low budget movie. Yeah. RDJ comes with all the controversy and, and just steals the show, right? Uh, it appealed to the hardcore collectors, the fans, and then also the normies. Everybody got to see Iron Man. And truthfully, in the comics, he was more of a B yeah, line was, kind yeah. of character. And um, that gives you the power of a good story, uh, a charming uh, actor, a good script. And that just really took over, right? The, the world. And getting that little hook at the end mm -hmm. with the post-credit scenes, uh, getting especially Samuel Jackson and that movie to show up. It, it just, I remember the movie theater, it just exploded. Yeah. And from there, they really replicated the, that formula, movie after movie, just getting fans and families out to the multiplex just to see these movies. Uh, it all culminated back in Endgame after 20 movies. It was incredible. And just for the hardcore fans, getting for Cap to say, in the final movie, Avengers Assemble. That's what's been brewing <laughs> through the entire, like, you know, more like more than a decade, really, of movies. Uh, so we were just so excited to see that. You got goosebumps yeah. when you heard him say that, right? Oh, I tear up every day. <laughs> <laughs> like, so what, one of the things I always love about Marvel movies, all the little Easter eggs, how they have Stan Lee and, yeah. and all the movies and, and all these little sort of inside jokes. I think that's just like a tip of the hat to the hardcore fans that sort of it get is. it. It is, absolutely. And, and that worked so well for them mm -hmm. because they, they stayed through the source material. They make some tweaks and edits. And what was cool about Marvel, and to a degree it still is, you have a lot of nerds that are really involved with this yeah, movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Love the comics, love just the mythology of these characters, right? Uh, Kevin Feige being one of those that he leads Marvel Studios, but he was also involved with the X-Men franchise back in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. Um, he couldn't really lead it how he wanted to. Yeah. But he has a famous story, actually, how he used to feed Hugh Jackman comics. So he could actually read them. Uh, Brian Singer didn't want him to to be influenced by the comics. Right. Like, Do your own thing. It was all black leather. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. The whole <laughs> vibe of the, the 2000 X-Men. But uh, Hugh Jackman loved it. And hence, that's why he finally, after like 30 years of playing the character, right, he comes back and uh and gets on the, the yellow suit so the that yellow was, suit yeah 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 cool. well I, lo I love it so i mean look you know everybody knows the story right marvel does this they sell to disney ends up being one of the greatest investments disney ever makes and it's billion dollar movie after billion dollar movie until recently where they've had a lot of flops where do you think they went wrong well they they liquidated the quality of the product right mm -hmm. like you get to end game and then how you top that right you know the, the movie is the second gross uh, film of all time, um, arguably number one at times, right? Um, and where do you go from there? And they thought, well, we can just throw anything at the wall and the fans will love it. Yeah. And it wasn't the case. So you bring down the quality, um, they, you bring in a lot of new directors, right? That they didn't know the source material, they ignored the source, source mm -hmm. material, they thought people were just gonna like it because it's Marvel, right? You're right. And it isn't like that. Yeah. So you need a good story. You need to clearly. It always goes back to to the comics. Yeah. And like the, the the colors and the character development that you need to create in the movie. I think that's the one thing that we all felt really good about 
RDJ and Cap and all those guys that we got to see them, right? We got to know yeah. them under the skin. Um, phase uh, four, really, it was just, they went too wide. Yeah. Um, and there was also like something, they try to pass on the mantle. Like this happened in the comics, uh, Marvel comics in 2012 to 2015, where they created something called Marvel now. And that mm. really pass on the, the torch and created a lot of new characters that they kind of flopped in the comics. Yeah. Uh, some of them are still around and they're okay as beeline characters, but you can't really make them center stage. So yeah. the proof is what works in the comics, what the fans, hardcore fans love, uh, and stop being successful in the actual movies. Yeah, stick to the formula it, it that does. works. Uh, I think people got superhero fatigue, but I think that's a cop out. If you have good crafted stories, you're loyal to your hardcore fan base, you can make it work. They went way too wide, bit of a money gram. I think Disney Plus wasn't great to the Marvel Universe. It just kind of waters down some of the characters. And and you're right, I, 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 some of the stuff that I watched, it just it just missed the mark uh, on so many levels. It wasn't like the true, you know, go back to 2010, you know, great, great Marvel stories. Disney Plus, it can be a really good thing, yeah. right? Like streaming, you know, the direction that we're going with that. But uh, they went through a pandemic. They had uh, a couple of shows in the can. Mm. Uh, they were ready to go, like One Division and the Winter Soldier. Yeah. Those were like, okay, right? But um, then you had a lot of problems with CGI and yeah. just overall low quality and just the, the stories fell flat and, and the, the, you know, the people noticed um, and they were using that platform to introduce characters and it just wasn't having the same effect. Yeah. Um, yeah, they focus on different things. They went too wide. And I think that's why now you see uh, Bob Iger and Kevin Feige coming back and saying, slow down, right? Yeah. After like so many flops. And right. they had like the worst performing Marvel movie with the Marvels, really. Like, yeah, 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 it was terrible. Um, it, with that movie, by the way, like I, I don't know who is the audience of that movie. Right, right, is right. Is it right, for right. the normies? Is it for the for hardcore the kids, fans? Yeah. Is it for kids? Is it funny? It's not that funny. Yeah. Anyways, all over the place, right? Uh, but they had this thing where they were shooting a bunch of different scenes with the actors and they were saying, oh, okay, it's not so great. We'll fix it in post. Right. And it never got fixed. <laughs> and, and Kevin Feige was just not in set, just checking these things and all that, right? So anyways, so I think it was kind of going back and saying, hey guys, we, we got to really tune this, uh, yeah. tone this down. Um, and probably the proof is on Daredevil Born Again. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves the Netflix show. Yeah. You have seen it. If you haven't, like, watch it. It's, it's worth favorite. watching, really? It's incredible. Okay. Three seasons, all rated. Yeah. Uh, so good. And they did it like PG. Uh -huh. And uh, it was Disney Fight. I don't even want to know what it was, but it was so bad that Kevin Feige basically said, uh, we cannot put this. Yeah. It'll, 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 it'll so kill the brand. Take it back to formula strip it down in um brought back like characters that fans love like mm. karen page and his best friend and all that right that needed to be in yeah. the in the series so anyway so that will be released later on uh that'll be a good test yeah for the, the quality control that they established um and then always see like you can tell with deadpool and wolverine like I yeah think it was that, a hit great talent. yeah like, over a billion dollars worldwide it and, was awesome I, um, I really enjoyed it yeah, it, it was so fun, right? And it just goes back to, that was pure fan, fan service. Yes, 100%. It, it, it was. Yeah. Uh, so many Easter eggs. I think, I don't know what normal people really thought about some of the inside jokes. Yeah. Um, always taking a lot of jabs at Marvel. Yeah, right? well, Disney, which was brilliant. Um, making fun of themselves, yeah. right? Like, you know, we're tired of the multiverse. Yeah. Well, <laughs> technically, in a way, the multiverse would have been their greatest hit. Yeah. They had unlimited possibilities to yeah. do this so well. It it fell flat. I think the pivoting moment was in Doctor Strange. Mm -hmm. That movie uh, just didn't perform and didn't develop the way it should have. Yeah. But, but anyways, but the chemistry of Brian Reynolds and Hugh Jackman and just, you can tell that having a blast having this Correct. Movie, making this movie. Yeah. Um, and the story was okay, right? Right. Like, but it, it's just, they make it work. You bring the yellow suit, you give us what we want. Yeah. Gambit, Electra, um, Blade coming back. Come on. Like, well, it, 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 they awesome. played the hits. Yeah. It's like when you go watch the Rolling Stones and they start playing their new music, that's when I go get a beer, 
right? I want to yeah. hear all their old stuff. Like Marvel knows that there's a formula. Oh my God, wait a minute. He took yeah, off the yeah, mask, gonna, Magneto. We have the we're, real viewing. We're going to Look at the hair. That's his superpower. <laughs> um, hopefully not a lot of like uh, helmet <laughs> hair. But You look we'll great. See. You look great. Yeah, thank you. But, um, but, but, but there's also some more good news. Yeah. I think it blew every Marvel fan's uh, head off when Mr. Robert Downey Jr. comes out and he's going to play Dr. Doom. That came out of nowhere. We no, like there RDJ. wasn't even rumors about it. No, we we thought Marvel, it, the thing's like, they have to bring him up. Now, when you a, say a, a we truck. thought, is this like a Reddit uh, conversation? <laughs> it, it, <it's, laughs> right, right, right. On the, <laughs> on the obscure webs, we were all thinking dark like web. He, yeah, he needed to, to return. But the thing is, how you make him like come back and not like seem like a cheap shot at yeah. undoing what he did in Endgame, right? Right. We all thought, well, with the multiverse, you can he can be from another different universe, different yeah. things. But um, the one thing it, I think all the fans wanted in is was Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom, uh, that, yeah. that is the ultimate villain, uh, similar to Magneto. What makes this villain so cool is the duality, right? Just like yeah. Darth Vader in Star Wars, like they're good, they're bad, they're anti-hero by nature. Yeah. But um, and then also the the mix in Doctor Doom between technology and magic. It's just an awesome character all around. So I don't think it can be a use Doctor Doom once and done kind of thing. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, no, we were not expecting RDJ to come back and, and play Doctor Doom. So a lot of questions on to how is this going to work? Uh, is he going to be Victor Brundum? Why does he look like Tony Stark? Um, is he a variant? There's so many questions, right? right. Um, and I think at some point, because... Uh, he looks like Tony Stark. Yeah. You will have to bring um, Chris Evans back. And just have like a I don't know why going he at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, yeah it's yeah. going to happen. It, it, it cannot it, not happen. Plus, they're right. good friends. So, yeah. What but, what what um what is he going to be in the Fantastic Four new movie? What, what, when, when does he come out? Should be um, a post credit scene or something. The okay. Fantastic Four movie is going to be set in a totally different universe. It's going to collapse. It's going to go through incursions, which is going to be destroying the fabric of the universe. And Got then, it. So the Fantastic Four somehow are going to come back to this universe, this Earth, and yeah. become our Fantastic Four. And Doctor Doom should go with that. So they will be already established. They fought Doctor Doom multiple times, whatever that is. Yeah. Um, and they should have probably Galactus destroy Earth, I would say. Wow. Yeah, wow. So that should be pretty cool. So that's not the only uh, group that's returning. The Russo brothers are back. The Russo are back. That was part of the deal with RDJ. RDJ said, I'm really? coming back if the Russo's direct. So Avengers Doomsday in uh, Secret Wars. And when do, th when do those start? Those are supposed to be released 2026 and 2027. So that's yeah, a, that's it, a Avengers 5 and 6. Yeah. And what do you expect? What are those movies going to be about? It, it, it should be just pure awesomeness. They, <laughs> they, they have like <laughs> the greatest character like with Doctor Doom. They're going to tell his story in this universe. He's going to destroy the Avengers, the Dark Avengers, yeah. if the Thunderbolts start to be that. Uh, he's going to just take over Earth, but at the same time, save the universe by collapsing everything into battle world, which is gonna be kind of where Deadpool and Wolverine were. Yeah. Um, and it's gonna look a little different, it's gonna be different, but he is gonna become what it's called like uh, God Emperor Doom. Okay. So he'll reign over reality, basically. Yeah. Um, we'll see if he'll be married to Sue Storm or something, because wow. he has a thing with, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with the Fantastic Four, but, uh, that would be really cool. And I'm thinking that's going to be the cliffhanger. And then we're going to go into Secret Wars when you're going to have to assemble uh, a last minute multiverse team mm -hmm. to, you know, save reality so, and right. kind of restore the universe. So we shall see uh, what happens. But either, either way, he's a fantastic actor. And he's it's awesome. just going to be yeah, yeah. awesome to have him back. Yeah. All right. So back to saving reality. Yeah. One that hit home for me was I'm a huge X Men fan. And the franchise just falling apart. Disney buys a bunch of Fox properties. They have X Men back. There's going to be a reboot. Like, well, what's the story? What's the update on X Men? It should be a reboot after Secret Wars, because it, after it, Secret Wars, okay, yeah. And, and for the ones that want to do some homework, you can read the Secret Wars from 2015 by Jonathan Hickman. Uh -huh. That is probably the direction they're going to go. Okay, uh, great read in. Probably it will reboot and it will create the, you know, uh, Gene X and you have all these uh, X-Men pop and probably face 
seven at that time is going to be focused on the mutants and like right. the perspective of the universe through the mutants. You're still going to have the Avengers probably take a chance to recast Iron Man, Captain America, right? Like mm -hmm. all those. Um, and Tonics kind of keep going, you know, Black Panther. We need a new Black Panther. We need a new Black Panther. Um, a big time, incredible character. So I think that's the direction they're going to go. Mm -hmm. um, but again, we'll see. And I want a Doctor Doom to continue. That it's not going to be RDJ. Should not be RDJ. Why? You think he, he just does one or two pops and then yeah, he's done? It's, it's a, yeah, a couple movies deal and, and he's done. So that's why I think it's, uh, we're going to have a long-term Doom afterwards. Got it. Um, I have a game that we're going to play. Let's do it. You ready? Yeah. Okay, so the game is buy, sell. Okay. And what I do is just like, uh, call it like a stock pick, is I give you a word and you say buy or sell. You Got ready? It. Yeah, let's do it. The new Cap movie. The new Captain America movie. Sell it. Wow. Why are you selling it? I love Anthony Mackie as the Falcon. I, I, you don't know if he can pull up the... the... I, we'll, we'll, we will see. We will see. It's, it's TBD. I, I'm hoping it's going to be good, but I think we're going to have to wait to the Russos to get a really, really good film. Wow. All right. The new Daredevil uh, reboot. Buy it. Buy Anthony Mackie. I, I, I buy him. You yeah. buy him? Yeah. As a... Um, I think he's been great uh, as, again, as Falcon, as supporting character. Um, I just don't know if he can lead as Cap, mainly because we had Chris Evans for so long. He just looks yeah, like he, Captain America. Like, he just yeah, does. He's the guy. It, and, and you see the effect of the audience when he showed up. Yeah. And, sorry, spoilers. And that one more for me. So yeah, it. it, it's this theater just yeah. exploded. That was the, the best cameo. <laughs> All right. The new Fantastic Four movie. Yeah, buy it. Buy it. Okay. Uh this thing I don't I didn't even know this character, but it seems like there's a new Disney Plus show. Agatha the Witch. Sold it. Sold, sold, sold what it. What is a this long character? <laughs> You're talking about like an F or R character. Yeah, yeah. Like right? just a like niche of from, a niche. Yeah. It came from the One Division show. It is a comic book character, but it is one of those that you need to get the heavy hitters to, yeah, yeah, to yeah. lead the pack. You, this is gonna be very stretched out. Um, that on arrival, it sucks. It is part of that quality control yeah, uh, right. situation that they think is a little bit better. They have to release it at this point. Oof. All right, Ironheart. Sell it. Sell it. The trailer looked terrible. It, We've seen this before, the smart young girl, and then she becomes Iron. I mean, it, it just, the storyline's just not there for me. It doesn't, didn't work in the comics either. It didn't work in the comics, yeah. So yeah. I don't know why they're rebooting this. What about Thunderbolts? You know, that is gonna be a wild one. I'm gonna say buy it for now um, because they're gonna do this character called the Sentry. Okay. And it's it's really cool. It's this guy that has like uh, a mental disorder, creates a double personality. Yeah. But he has basically the powers of Superman pretty much. Um, so so I think it could be really interesting. It's an anti-hero type of team that will probably turn at the end into being the Dark Avengers. And they're probably gonna show up as, um, that they, they're gonna take over like the Avengers Tower. They're gonna so, take, okay. Yeah, so I think that's gonna be the, the team. There will be a new Avengers team led by Falcon mm -hmm. and both teams are gonna be decimated by Doctor Doom. One last one, I know it's not Marvel, but there's a movie that I'm very excited about, the new Joker. Buy or sell Lady Gaga as his girlfriend? No, buy it, buy it. She, she's a good actress. She, I, I'm, she I'm is, you. yeah, and she's, she's She's just weird. She's part of the, the, the <laughs> yeah. You the can pack. see her being in a, Joker's in a good girlfriend, way, right? Yeah. yeah. So I think it, it can really work. We'll have to see. Second parts are always, you know, sequels are not always the best, but uh, also not super big into musicals. And this would be a bit it's, of a it's musical. A, it's, it's a bit of a musical, right? Yeah. yeah. But and, uh, and what's the storyline there? I don't. I don't quite get it. Uh, supposedly they're both in Arkham Asylum, and mm -hmm. she will be there. They'll meet. She's not going to be his. Uh, doctor basically like in, in the comics yeah we'll have to see how they develop that and it seems like they have a, a share uh delusion um together and then at some point they'll probably come out and we'll see what is real what's not perhaps maybe not maybe not so it, now does batman make an appearance in this movie i don't think so no i don't think so because they made batman be a little kid in the first movie this seems to just have not much of a time gap yeah um, and Todd Phillips said that he, he did not want to do Batman. And curious enough, he said his top choice for Batman, if he ever added a Batman, okay. was going to be uh, Bradley Cooper. 
Bradley Cooper as Batman, he might be pretty good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's a great actor. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I like uh, the, the, the new Batman. Uh, Pattinson? Uh, yeah, I thought he was pretty yeah. good. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I like the new Batman. We will do a DC Comics podcast at some point, but I don't want to get ahead. There is a new DC uh, miniseries coming out, The Penguin on HBO. Yes, yes. What are your thoughts? I mean, the trailer looked really cool. I think it's going to be good. Um, Matt Reeves is a great director. He's yeah. involved with that too. So it's just going to build up on where he left off with the Batman. So right. it, the thing about the Batman is the more you watch it and rewatch it, um, the better the film gets. I agree with you 100%. Than, yeah. than the time, you know, because we were still on the hypes on Marvel and Endgame yeah. and all those things. Um, it was just long. It's kind of like a slow burn yeah. of the film. But, a little dark. Right, but he's he's a great director, so it's gonna be good. The rumor is that Batman's gonna appear in this miniseries. Do you think it's I true? think it's possible, yeah. Yeah, very much. It'd be very cool. Yeah. All right, so real quick, um, you, you, you were nice enough to bring in a bunch of comics. Tell me about the comic industry. Give me the 40,000 foot view. We've had a boom in comic books. You've been collecting for 30 years, but... The last couple of years, what's give me the current state of the comic book industry. What's hot? What's not? And if I wanted to start a collection, where would I start? Oof, I love to unpack there. Yeah, yeah. There was a comic boom uh, through the pandemic. People yeah. had nothing to do but collecting comics. Everybody was jumping in. Yeah, uh, a lot of people that didn't know anything about comics. Right, they created a bubble. They, right. the, the bubble exploded <laughs> eventually. Like a uh, similar thing happened in the nineties, mm -hmm. where they were printing like crazy number of comics. Uh, Still X Men number one, the most sold comic books of uh, of all time. Yeah, uh, by Jim Lee. In yeah, so then everything came down crashing. In uh, you know, like the hardcore fans and collectors are still there. Yeah, we still do our thing, but definitely a lot more um, affordable uh, price correction. Yeah, price correction. Stocks, right. Right? It happened in cards. Uh, it happened in yeah. all kinds of asset classes. Yeah. So the question is for anyone that wants to get into comics is. Why do you want to get into comics? Right. And you have to know why you collect this stuff. Right. So if you're just trying to make a quick buck and speculate, yeah, you can, it might work for a little bit, but eventually it's, it's not going to be as fulfilling. Yeah. Um, and where to jump on? Like jump on with whatever you like. Mm -hmm. Find, pick up a couple of comics, that, uh, current comics, maybe uh, classic stories like Secret Wars, read that yeah. up and... If you love it, then you want to say, "Oh, I might want to read more from this writer or right. these artists." Right? Um, for me, it was a combination of good stories and good art. Like the and art is what it. makes it. Yeah. yeah. So not only because I like to to draw and and make my own art, but mm -hmm. this is just inspiring. These are the, the the modern like gods that we we have created. Right? Yeah, they're super cool, man. So, so I think that's that's what it is. Um, and then know that over time you're preferences are going to change like i went from modern comics to silver age comics to now i really get into the old old stuff with golden age the 30s mm. the 40s right um and then you get to appreciate art in different ways yeah like right you know when you look at jack kirby, kirby in the 60s working with stan lee back in the 90s i didn't appreciate jack kirby like really? it was it the figures just seem like distorted to he's me. a they controversial seem, character right. in the comic book world correct yeah yeah for sure um and it just wasn't i don't know it felt like it wasn't for me and then at some point like it clicked i was like this is just pure genius and really I just couldn't get enough yeah, yeah, yeah curvy yeah. art it's yeah, just, yeah so so yeah it's, it's really fun um but you have to know what you why you want to get into it Jack Kirby, what, what was it? He, he was a bit bitter, never felt he got his due, and then lots of lawsuits, am I correct? Yeah, he did. And at some point, he was so unhappy with Marvel that it went to DC. Right. Um, and he just, he wanted to do things his way, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and he didn't always see things eye to eye with Marvel, you know, with Stan Lee, Lee right? Yeah. Um, he still did some cool stuff when he went on his own to DC and created this whole mythology with Darkseid and what's called the Fourth World and um never really did justice on mm -hmm. on the the big screen on that but uh and then he did some really weird independent stuff too really yeah no interesting cat well listen thank you for coming on we're gonna do two things number one we're gonna do a dc segment uh here in the next couple of months maybe when they have some new releases they have a backlog and their story is much more messy and i can't wait to get yeah, into that yeah, yeah. and then the second thing for everybody who's watching on youtube we're gonna do a small clip uh, Gonzalo was nice enough to bring in a bunch of his comics. He'll walk you through his collection, some of the stuff he's working on. It's a really, really cool uh, little clip. 
uh, that if you want to learn about comics and kind of how he does his thing, uh, might be real helpful. But uh, Amigo, thank you. Yeah, I love the Magneto. You. I still don't know how you have a girlfriend, but yeah. somehow uh, yeah. uh, she 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 really likes you. But uh, thanks. Thank you, Dan. Good to be here. <laughs>